Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to the next video, still dealing with transformations of quadratics. So in this particular video, we're going to look at the specific transformation that's a vertical stretch and compression and also a reflection in the x-axis. Now in the previous overview video, what I mentioned is that we're going to have a base function y equals x squared, and then we're going to transform it, and then once it's transformed, it's going to take, there's different formats that a quadratic can take. I went over that as well, but the format that we're going to specifically be looking at in this section is that vertex form. Okay, that's where, that's the kind of format that gets outputted once a quadratic goes through certain transformations. However, I also mentioned that the a, H, and K value, those are what's going to affect the transformations depending on what values those take, but we're going to go through them one by one. I mentioned that as well. So in this particular video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the A value. So we're going to just pretend that the H is zero, the K is zero. We're going to forget about those. And so instead of looking at this entire format where we're mixing all the different transformations, we'll be doing that in the future. Here, in this particular video, we'll just be looking at that a value. How does that a value affect that base function, y equals x squared? And it really depends on the value that the a can take. So there's different values. So here are the different cases that can happen. We can have an a value that is greater than 1. That's the first type of case. And if this happens over here, if a is greater than 1, then what the transformation is going to be is there's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of a. So for example, if we have like the function y equals 3x squared, right? Notice that the a value is greater than 1, the a value is 3 in this case. This here, there would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Now, the way this looks graphically, in each of these cases, I'm going to show you how this kind of function with an a value greater than 1 relates to the function x squared. So let's say that we have x squared like this, right? So this here is x squared. Let me show you in a different color. The way, for example, y equals 3x squared is going to look, or any a value that's greater than 1 could be 2x squared, 5x squared, 10x squared, whatever, it's going to look something like this, okay? It's going to be vertically stretched, right? So if this is x squared, right, if you plot x squared, for example, if you go to decimals, plot one graph x squared, and then another graph you plot 3x squared or 5x squared, 2x squared, that graph is going to look like this in relation to that um, x squared graph. So that is the, um, the first case. So if an a value is greater than 1, there's a vertical stretch by a factor of that a value. Now, the next case is if a is equal to 1. And if a is equal to 1, let's sort of split these up here. If a is equal to 1, well, notice, what are we just going to get? We're going to end up with that same function, y equals x squared, right? There will be a 1 here. 1 times x squared is just x squared. So an a value of 1 means that actually there's no transformation, right? It's just that same base or parent function, y equals x squared. The next case is if a is between 0 and 1. Okay, if a is between 0 and 1. If that happens, then we're going to have a vertical compression by a factor of a. Okay, so an example of this would be like if we have Lots of times these a values here between 0 and 1, they could be decimal, so maybe like 0.5x squared or 0.2x squared. A lot of times they'll be fractions as well. So let's put a fraction, let's say it's like 1 over 3x squared like that. If you get a function like this, they ask you to state the transformations that are undergone on x squared. Here you would say there's a vertical compression by that same factor of 
1 over 3. Now, just one thing I want to mention, you want to be careful here. Not all fractions are necessarily a vertical compression. So for example, we can have y equals, let's say, 5 over 4x squared. Notice that this is a fraction, but if you look at the a value, 5 over 4 is 1.25. So that's an a value greater than 1. And so this particular function, this particular quadratic would actually be in this case. So this would be a vertical stretch over here. But if it would be, let's say, 4 over 5, right, that's 0 0.8. That would be a vertical compression by 4 over 5. So just be careful. Lots of times students will see fractions and then they'll automatically assume that it's this case because a lot of times this a value between 0 and 1 is given as a fraction, but some fractions can also be greater than 1 and they would end up being a vertical stretch and not a compression. So just be careful with these fractions. So this will either be a fraction or a decimal to represent an a value between 0 and 1. Now the way this looks graphically Again, let's say that we have the base function x squared like this. If we end up having a function with an a value between 0 and 1, it's going to be vertically compressed. Okay, So what that would mean is that the function would end up looking like this, y equals ax squared. Right? And that's if a is between 0 and 1. So notice the difference between a vertical stretch, that's how a function looks like, and a vertical compression, right? The function becomes wider. So if you go to Desmos, if you plot x squared and then maybe like 0.5x squared or 0.1x squared, that's how that transform graph is going to look in relation to x squared. So moving on with the, uh, with the cases, let me actually erase it over here. What would be the next case? So the next case would be if we have an a value of zero, right? An a value of zero would actually, there would end up being no function, right? So usually you're not gonna get that case because if a is zero, then we'll just end up having y is equal to zero and that is just a horizontal line at a y value of zero, right? So this case you don't necessarily have to worry about. I'm just going through all the potential or all of the possible cases that can come up for a. Now after zero, the next, if we're going in order, the next case would be if a is between negative one and zero. And if this happens here, then we still have, remember when a is between zero and positive one, there was a vertical compression. Well, if it's between negative one and zero, then there's also a vertical compression. However, what we do is the factor that we mentioned, it's compressed by, is not the negative a value. Notice here, this is gonna be a negative a value, right? Before we were dealing with the positive a values, now we're dealing with the negative a values. When we say it's vertically compressed here, we don't say by, let's say, Let's say we're dealing with like y equals negative 1 over 3x squared. We don't say it is vertically compressed by negative 1 over 3. We still say it's vertically compressed by positive 1 over 3. And so the way that's represented here generally is we say by an absolute value of a. That's what the factor is going to be. And what an absolute value does is it takes any negative, turns it into a positive. So this here we would say it's vertically compressed by an absolute value of negative 1 over 3. And so this here is just the same as 1 over 3. Right? Don't get confused with this, this absolute value. I'm just mentioning it because some textbooks may write a description like that. Basically, if you get something like this, what you want to say, it's vertically compressed by positive 1 over 3. You don't want to add that negative when you're stating the factor. The factor is always positive. So you may want to write a note here. This here is always positive. So then what is the difference between if we have, for example, positive 1 over 3 or negative 1 over 3? Because when it was positive 1 over 3, it was also vertically compressed by 1 over 3. Well, if it's negative, there's also an additional transformation. There's also a reflection in the x-axis. 
right? So the x squared is going to be reflected. So now it's actually going to be opening downwards. So that's another thing uh, to mention on the side here. If you have any positive a values, uh, so that could be between zero and positive one, one, or greater than one, all three of those first cases that we went over. For all of those, a was greater than zero, it was positive. And what that means is that the quadratic is opening upwards. Okay, but if a is less than zero, if it's negative, which is the three cases we're about to go over, then the quadratic is opening downwards. Okay, so instead of a quadratic opening up, we're going to end up having quadratics that open downwards. Okay, and they're either going to be stretched or they're going to be compressed, but nevertheless, they're going to be opening down. And so the way this particular case would look, so for example, y equals negative 1 over 3x squared, if they ask you to state the transformation of this, like we said, there's a vertical compression by 1 over 3. Okay, this is still a compression here, but we also have to say it's reflected in the x-axis. Okay, and the way that is going to look, if we have, let's say, x squared, like that, that's the base function x squared. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to be reflected. So now it's going to open downwards, but it's also going to be compressed. So it's going to be a wider function like that, right? If that a value is between negative 1 and 0. And again, be careful with your fractions. Like, for example, negative 4 over 3, that would be like negative 1.33. That's not between negative 1 and 0. Right? That's less than negative 1, which is uh, a case we're going to go over in a sec. So same thing applies. Just be careful with these fractions over here. Right? So if you see a negative, it might be useful to just write reflected in the x-axis and then just forget about the negative and then just treat it as a positive there. And then you could write that same transformations that you would write if it was positive, that vertical compression or stretch. All right, so that is the next case. Now, the following case after that is pretty simple. It's if a is equal to negative 1, right? Here it's between negative 1 and 0. The next one is negative 1. This one's really simple. Notice there's no vertical stretch or compression, but there is a reflection in the x-axis. So remember when a was 1, there was no transformation. We just ended up with that same base function, x squared. But if it's negative 1, now we'll have negative x squared. And even though there's no vertical stretch or compression, there's still a reflection in the x-axis. And the way that looks, very simple. We got x squared like this. Then an a value of negative 1 or negative x squared is going to have that same shape but pointing the other way. So this here would be negative x squared. So there would only be a single transformation of a reflection in the x-axis. And then finally, the, um, the final case is if a is less than negative 1. So if a is less than negative 1, then what happens? There's a vertical stretch by the absolute value of a. So we don't write the negative a value. We still write the positive a value when we're describing the stretch. But there's also, because it's negative, there's also a reflection in the x-axis. Right, so for example, if we have like y equals negative 4 x squared, the transformation on this would be there's a vertical stretch by a factor of 4, positive 4, plus a reflection in the x-axis. And in this particular case, the way this looks, if we got x squared like that, 
it's going to be reflected and stretched. So it's going to look a little thinner like that, right? This would be y equals ax squared um, if a is less than negative one. So remember when there was like a vertical stretch uh, and it wasn't reflected, it kind of looked like this, right? We drew that before. So it's basically the reflection of this new graph to here like that. All right, and those are the different cases that that a value can take. And sometimes they'll be asking whether it opens upwards or downwards. That's very simple. If the a value is positive, opens upwards. If it's negative, then it's opening downwards. All right, so just be on the lookout for all of these cases.